Cook here, the author of Sex, Leadership and Rock and Roll. Ta -da! We do wonderful conferences and events based on this book. I'd like you to have a look at some of the examples which are both intelligent and really quite enjoyable. Let's have a quick tour. The whole business of career development, if you took one message away, it comes down to three simple things. Sex, that's about relationships, one on one, one to many, that's merger, isn't it? <laughs> Here's a conference we did for Pfizer called It's My Life. It was focused on career development, getting people to take control of their own careers and life, and this was a session we did at the end of the month long of events. Yeah, I mean, she said, you know, how, how does it have networks? I sat in that meeting and I got a few contacts out there afterwards that were really useful to help us along the world too. So, I mean, just actually assuming that five phone calls and you can get to where you want to get to, really does work. I came to see that, but also to see your thing. So I'm reinforcing that one. If you want to have a career, you have to be good at relationships, whether you're a shy introvert or an out there extrovert. Here we have Unilever at their Food Strategy Conference in Rome. Now this is the after hours team build and jam session after all the intellectual material has been dealt with. Here's our work in the public sector in education, where we took 300 teachers out for the day and exposed them to a range of strategies for creative learning. Let's take a look at some of the participation here. All in all, it's a brick in the wall. We need something like that. It's going, it's sort of going down at the end, isn't it? I can't possibly rectify it, but it's rather, it's got to laugh, so it must be worth it. Well, Keith, and here's the head teacher sort of reviewing what he thinks of the day in terms of the educational value so far. But could you wind us back to before the beginning of the day? I mean, as a, a head here, why have you put yourself through this all, all this agony? And you know, why have you put this day on? What's the overall educational ambition? Well, the government produced the Excellence and Enjoyment document, mm -hmm. which was encouraging us to look at uh, creativity, mm -hmm. uh, um, much more creative curricula. Because what we're really looking at doing is offering the children, um, by the staff today, obviously, um, a more enhanced and enriched curriculum. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, and that's for all children. So regardless of age, ability, um, whatever, uh, wherever they're coming from they're getting a, a really exciting and interesting opportunity. Okay. How's it going so far then? I think the, the uh, staff, uh, certainly the staff at Sherwood are enjoying themselves. <laughs> they, they offer a curriculum like this anyway. But I think, yeah, generally there's a buzz and atmosphere about the day that is, you know, seeing teachers enjoying themselves. And I think there's a lot in that. Yeah. You know, their own personal enjoyment today is really important. And kind of they're trying out different learning styles as well. So it's not, not just doing their... I think Standard the whole thing. issue of uh, a kinesthetic approach to learning mm. is very much more in the forefront these days. Yeah. And, and the types of workshops we're offering today are very practical, very hands-on, get up on, off your backside, onto your feet, get your hands dirty, enjoy yourself, and then begin to look at what learning's actually happening. And now, here's a piece of micro stardom. This is John Otway performing uh, with me at Pfizer at the conference on career development in the sort of after hours session doing a famous hit, not one of his. Finally, 
here's a piece of our work on TV. For all the knee-jerk initiatives to make teachers relate to pupils on a level they're comfortable with, there remains a gulf of misunderstanding. Yet the answer has been with us for 50 years, ever since little Richard pounded out a wop bop a loop up a wop bamboo on his old Joanna. The majesty of rock, the pageantry of role, can turn the most insubordinate little git and grumpy colleague into adoring fans. That's according to my next guest. Please welcome the author of Sex, Leadership and Rock and Roll, Peter Cook. Cheese has to stop there. Peter, um, give us your message. We've got many gurus, prof, false prophets, trailing through these studios telling teachers what to do. Give us your message, if only for us to shoot it out of the air. Well, as you know, I am a false prophet. My message is have more sex. Let's have better relationships with your fellow colleagues, maybe not the kids. Um, take more drugs, which is motivate yourself and others and lead the school. And do more rock and roll, which is actually perform. So, I mean, you, you got 300 teachers together uh, to indulge in a musical jam session. What possible use could that be to them? Well, they're, they're down in the south of England, so, of course, they don't rock down. I, I can't say, but it's somewhere near Tunbridge Wells. <laughs> so we had them out for the day on sort of accelerated learning and stuff, and uh, mine was the music lesson. And I said to them, in half an hour, can you rewrite a rock classic around how you can take control of the classroom? And quite surprisingly, only with tea and biscuits, they did. So, I hope you really enjoyed that quick tour of what human dynamics do in the field of conferences, after-dinner speaking and events with a difference. Please contact us. The website details and contact numbers are just about to come up. Thanks very much. <laughs>